Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me again. I always do appreciate it. And welcome back to Emerald Gardens. It's double digits of Emerald Gardens. Thanks for the great feedback in last week's episode. Um, <clears throat> you, everyone seems to really appreciate and enjoy the format, so we're gonna we're gonna stick with it here. So you're gonna see a whole bunch of cuts again today. It's all gonna be real time, and I'll just show off. What I've been doing and the thought process it, but thought processes oh, behind it. So let's take a look because some things have changed already. So we are in our wolf habitat. Oh, there they go. What you playing? Look at that. It's so cute. So I did bring an extra wolf in. We're up to four now. And since welfare is turned off, I think it's still all females except for one male. I could have brought another male in. One of the things I found myself doing is trying to get the animals that are big. <laughs> I like, I like, I like the big animals. So in the actual habitat, um, someone had suggested adding. I think it was King RCT. Uh, I suggested adding some verticality elements. I thought about adding some logs or something, but it just looked too silly and artificial. So what I ended up doing is putting some fake rock work and some plants, some some bamboo. I'm starting to use bamboo a little bit more. Uh, throughout this project because as far as I know it grows pretty much anywhere so uh, but you can see now that it, it looks a lot better that does it doesn't stick out nearly as much you might have noticed something else new there we'll take a look in a second apologies if you can hear the airplane it's one of the few days here in Houston where we can <laughs> have the windows open so the windows are open so you'll have to deal and apparently we are under the flight path tonight but whatever so, uh, there's a couple little things here since our last episode. I've added this little grate up here to, to, to hint that the water's being pumped to the top and then it falls over the edge rather than just some magical spring. So we got that going. And the biggest change from last episode is the path here. I've taken care to actually fill it out a little bit. It felt a little narrow. Uh, and so I widened it and gave it some cute little shapes here and stuck some trees in between to kind of make it feel like we're actually in the woods on a trail. I really wanted to try and incorporate, um, try to incorporate the, uh, the habitat into where the guests would walk. I want it to feel like you just, oh, you stumble upon them in their habitat. So threw in some information signs, made a fence. This fence uses one of those new Arctic beams and then just some logs, and I think it looks really nice. It kind of gives that little rustic vibe that I think would fit really, really well. And I like the views you get. The wolves seem far enough away that you won't disturb them, and they can kind of do their thing, and it feels a little more natural. So added these statues here. I think these statues uh, are just a nice little thing, just a little way to do it. And then over here, I decided to further break things up a little bit, and if we had like uh, viewpoints for the guests, I would place one right here so that it would force the guests to come look through the window here. Like you can get pretty close and I like this view. I feel like, here, let's get rid of the glare. I feel like this view does a good job of, I don't know if I can get rid of the glare. Uh, can't get rid of the glare, lovely. I feel like this window does a good job of framing the habitat the way I want it to be. So that you can really just kind of see. I mean, I don't need to see the fence there, but you can't see much on either side here, which is kind of what I want. And then this area over here turned out really well, too. We added some more information science here, and I think this view is just great. You get really good views of the wolves from here. So that's kind of the little bits that I have done since you last saw the park. Uh, the zoo. Nothing else has changed as far as I know. I don't, I don't think anything else. I can't remember. I don't think I've done anything else. A lot of cleanup, but now you can see pretty much this whole wolf habitat here is, is all but done. And now it's time to move along. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to be tackling in this episode all of this. We are going to go for African elephants. We are going to put an elephant exhibit in, and since my layout of my zoo is really similar, especially this portion here, really similar to the Houston Zoo layout, and I know that zoo really, really well, I thought I would go ahead and build an 
elephant exhibit very similar to what they have at the Houston Zoo. And so what they have is they have two distinct pens, two distinct habitats with a, a house in the middle. Then there's another bigger night house um, in here. And you can come up and you can watch them give the elephants baths. And uh, they have a little water feature over on one side and a bigger water feature on the other side. And the whole point is uh, the Houston Zoo has a male herd, a male bachelor herd, and then a female herd. And they got to keep them separate at all times, uh, I guess, except for mating. And so, you know, depending on when you go, you'll see the elephants uh, in either side, males and females separated. So that's the goal. And I'm going to tell you right now, it, um, it it's going to take a while. It's a big exhibit. And as always, these things require research. So let's jump in and I'll sh let's see what we can what we can get done. <laughs> so just a quick update, actually, before we get into the elephants. I did, I, f I forgot, I did do this whole backstage, this whole backside of the exhibit. I wanted to block off the view. I really did want it to feel like you were secluded here in the wolf's territory. So that meant adding some rock work and adding a lot of foliage overgrowth so that you really can just see the top of the red pandas now. And we added this nice little rope fence here and uh, I think that's, yeah. And that's pretty much it for this area. <laughs> but I did want to show that I did not neglect that. So now let's go and take a quick gander at what we have going with our elephants. So I know it doesn't look like a lot, but with an exhibit this big, I really wanted to do some preliminary work. So what I ended up doing is throwing in the path, throwing in some, what I assume to be the backstage area here, the backstage path, and it would swing all the way around here and connect to the zoo this way. And then that would allow, since this is the road, that would allow uh, big vehicles to get right up in it, which is really kind of cool. And kind of light painted where I assume the habitat's gonna go. Did, now this is just to test. Uh, I wanted to see just how much space elephants needed and how big this was. This is about 600 and something square meters and they need over 2,000 square meters, uh, the elephants do, which is fine. Uh, it makes sense, I mean, elephants need a lot of room and I have no problem with, one of the things like, I know, I know we bash, a lot of times we bash, especially Mike and I bash on Frontier a lot, um, but elephants, I totally understand. Like, the, since I've been going to the zoo, the Houston Zoo, they, they've upgraded their elephant exhibit at least twice since I've been there, so. Uh, but anyway, this whole area is going to be a huge enclosure. The problem is, um, I'm going to have to make it two separate enclosures. And that probably means that each enclosure, enclosure will not be big enough, according to the game. Because it won't be one, it'll be two. Um, but we're going to have to roll with it. Uh, you can see over here, no, I'm not adding a Jeep ride. I, I mentioned this in a previous episode, and Mike has mentioned this in, in, one of, in one of his very first garden rescue videos for Delay Designer. This is how we make really, really smooth paths, uh, really, really smooth uh, uh, slopes. We take a track ride, and we lay it out, and we kind of get the idea of where we want the path to go. And then you use the terrain tools at a low brush size, ro low brush strength to raise or lower your terrain so that only a little bit shows, smooth it out, do some finesse work, and then you've got yourself a really gentle slope that is no problem for people to walk up and down. So just because there's a massive hill here, I wanted to figure out how I was going to make that work because this has to stay ground level, all of this. So kind of pondering, this first, this first update here is just kind of pondering how we're going to do it. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but but just hang on. It'll 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 get there. <laughs> it'll get there. So we have an elephant. Oh, and they're taking a giant dump. What timing? So I I got some elephants off the off the uh, whatever they're called the zoo trading thing. It's it's sandbox, so it doesn't even matter. But I wanted to put them in here so I could start judging the scale. And you can see here we're starting to work on the first animal house. And we're also starting to put some features in. I've broken it up into two different sides, and I have done some measurements to make sure that it is good size on both. So if I click on this habitat, you can see that the land area is 2,200 square meters, and over here it is 
2300 square meters. So these are actually pretty good size to have multiple elephants. Uh, it's it's going to look, it's going to be pretty good. Uh, like I said, everything I'm doing in this episode is based off of what the Houston Zoo has. So Mr. Uh, the elephant's going to hang out there. And, but you'll notice there's these <laughs> bright red things in here. These are my dummy elephants. So I can send Mr. Elephant. Actually, it's Miss Elephant, isn't it? No, it's Mr. Elephant. So I can send Mr. Elephant back to the trading center. And so I don't have to deal with the poop and the keepers and all that. And I made myself a little, <laughs> little blocky elephant. And what this does for me is it's scale. All I did was I paused the game and I put some rough block shapes around the elephant just to get the general idea of how big they're going to be. So I could see just how big does this interior need to be. <laughs> and so that was the biggest thing I came up with here. One of the things that I'm really struggling with uh, is the fact that the requirements for the elephants are they need a lot of grass, but I mean, there is very, very little grass in their habitat because they're so big. They stomp everywhere and they, they kill the grass. It's, it's really silly. So uh, I'm, I'm struggling with that. I think we're just going to roll with it. And there, since welfare is turned off, I guess it doesn't really matter. So... But you can see I've got a bigger water feature in over here. And it's raised here intentionally. Uh, it's going to be a look area, looking area for the peeps. They're going to be able to look. This won't be here. The fence won't be here. Um, and this will all be shored up and looking really, really pretty. Uh, it'll look really nice. Ho hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it'll look really, really nice. And the elephants will come in here and, and hang out and splash around. Um... I'm realizing that this is a much bigger endeavor than I originally anticipated, and the chances of all this being done in one episode are, are, are relatively slim, so we're probably going to make this a two-part episode, this elephant habitat. But uh, while we're here, working on some custom fencing, I don't want these electric fences. They look okay, but I need something a little thicker, a little bigger, feeling a little more weighted. And so we've got these. Uh, one of the things that I know people who know things are probably gonna say is there is not enough buffer zone between some of the paths and some of these spaces because elephant's trunks can reach surprisingly far. So I understand, I'm aware, and uh, it's one of those things. I, I thought I had more space than I did. And I really didn't want to move this road. And so it's everything's a little snug. Maybe not 110%, but that this is one of those times where I'm probably going to roll with it. Uh, these, these exhibit doors are not going to stay there. So the goal is to use all the null barriers and make it look as realistic and natural as possible. This house is a rough sketch, and it will be changing. At least the materials will be changing. Um, and I think it goes through a couple different iterations of, of shape. And uh, so we'll talk more about that in the next update. But you can see now, starting to figure things out. It still doesn't look like much. I know it still looks kind of... Mm. It was it was interesting. It was very much push, push, push. Doesn't look like anything. Push, push, push. Still doesn't look like anything. And then bam. Like in the span. Well, you'll see. All of a sudden, it starts to be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the ticket. So so let's 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 press forward now and, and keep working and see what, what what's next. So it's amazing what some plants <laughs> can do. Uh, this is a little closer now. You can see my bright red blocky elephants. But what's going to happen is one of the things I love about the Houston Zoo is uh, you can walk in between the exhibit and you have elephants on either side of you, and you can walk up. And you can actually peek in the house here. And every morning, as soon as we usually get to the zoo, right when it opens at, at, at 9. If you go, if you make a beeline to the uh, elephant exhibit, you can watch the elephants get their morning baths. And they stand in here. And this is probably a little snug. And again, I know it's probably a little snug. Oh, got to do some door work here. These doors are not quite what I want them to be. They're floating. That's not good. But um, that's a little snug in here. And it's one of those things. It's a, it's a, it's a creative liberty we're going to go with. I'm aware of the issue, uh, but I don't want this to become way so big that it dwarfs everything around it. So we're going to go with it being a little smaller and I'll make it look realistic, but it will be a little tight. 
Um, but anyway, they stand here and they give the elephants their baths, and there's usually like a mom and a baby, and then there's uh, you know, two or three pens in here. And uh, then there's another house over here where all the elephants, I assume, stay for the night. And that's, you can't see that, that's off limits to guess. But one of the things they have is they have this central planter area that's really lush and overgrown and really tall plantings. And I can only assume it's to block the view of this building. And so when these plants were here, the, the building stuck out like a sore thumb. And uh, now with just some plants in there, making sure like, you can see where the path is going to go. The path is going to snake right around this way. And that's going to make it look really nice. But having these, these plants here really helps to, uh, to block the view of the building. And that's, that's totally what we want. Um, Another thing they do is on the corners here, this is always really pretty heavily grown in. You can see I've sort of started to do that. It's really quite, quite heavily grown. One thing I noticed is that there were not any actual trees in their exhibit. And anything that was within their exhibit was out of reach or it was they had some fencing or some netting around it. And so that's something to keep in mind as we progress forward here and keep working. So still not much done with the terrain, uh, still trying to figure things out. The elephant house though now is the size and the shape that it's going to be. You can see on this side the doors. What I did, if you're curious how come I got those doors, it's just one door. The, you saw on the inside they were floating. I just flipped it around and nested it on top of each other so that it looks like a taller door that an elephant could easily fit through. And that's that. The two-tone thing uh, is, uh, is something that the Houston Zoo does, and I'm assuming it's for the guests. Uh, most of the back of the building is this brick, and the entirety of the other house is this brick, except for the very top area. The shape is a little different on both houses. Again, I, I'm a, I can only assume it's because this one is more in the public view than the other one, so... So that's what we're working on right now, trying to get this area and the house up to snuff. The animals do not have access to the house, and it actually makes a great barrier for the two different exhibits. Uh, one of the things that's kind of starting to get interesting that I did look at is <laughs> for as enveloped as you feel here, you're going to be able to look across and see elephants. So <laughs> I kind of like that though. Like, oh, we tried really hard to make it feel like you were walking in the woods with the wolves. And never mind the big old elephants over there. So keep pressing along here. It's going to start looking pretty interesting, I think, pretty soon. Uh, it's a lot of making sure that the size works, a lot of making sure that uh, everything makes sense. And because uh, I want it to look right, I want it to look real. I, could, I mean, I could just make, I could have, oh, you also notice the road is gone. I couldn't keep the size. I did have to increase the size a little bit. The road's going to have to come up this way a little bit more and whatever. I'm fine with it. It's fine. After after realizing the struggle, there's nothing I could have done. I, there is no way I could have fit another house and a whole backstage area without moving the road. So the road will move and I will have to deal with it and it will be fine. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be fine. So onward we go. So I know it doesn't look like much, but uh, some important things are happening here. I've gone ahead and extended my custom uh, fencing all the way along this way, all the way to the watering hole, and I've started blocking out the watering hole. Uh, that's a tiny little detail, but I think it adds a lot. I think it makes it so much more rooted in reality now. Just by having, you can see what this is going to look like all down here. And it's going to be all plantings and grown in over here. And like I mentioned, we've continued with the, 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 grow, the, uh, the overgrowth. Uh, or just the thick growth to kind of block your view a little bit. I don't want you to be able to see elephants the entire length of the exhibit. I mean... Uh, it, that's not what's best for animals, and it's not what's best for guests. It's a much more exciting adventure if you, you your view is obscured. But you can see, just by plopping some trees in here, and again, I know they'd be able to reach. One of the things the giraffes do at my zoo is they reach out. You can see where the giraffes can reach, because all the bark is missing from little parts of trees they can reach. I would assume that would happen with elephants too. 
Like, I, I, maybe they are. I'm no expert. Maybe they are powerful enough to pull a whole tree in with just their trunk. But, I mean, I know they can knock trees over no big deal with their bodies, but with just their trunks, I'm not sure. So, anyway, starting to do some detail work. You can see we've made this pond a little more secure. One of the things that they have in the Houston Zoo is they have this little rounded artificial backing that kind of... Uh, opens up into an area for the animal to get in and out of. Added a drain, added a couple hints of pipe work there for a, some sort of filtration system going on here. Adding some enrichment items that I plan to have and it's not identical on either side. Uh, so both sides have a wallowing pit. Uh, we'll see if they actually use that. You'll notice there are no elephants in here yet, just the red ones. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can see over here we've got another wallowing pit and some barrels, and the water is going to be the big head thing. There's some water element that's really cool, but I'm not sure if it's actually going to function the way I want it to. So I'm going to see if I can make it work. But you can see sort of the path coming in here now. I've been playing with it. Uh, I've removed it a bit. Um, yeah, we're just... It's slow go. It's, it's amazing. Like... <laughs> I expected there to be more in between each update, but hopefully you can see some changes here as we're going. It's just, it's feeling more filled in. It's feeling more um, incorporated, I think is a good word. It's feeling more incorporated into the zoo. Like you can see, okay, yeah, that totally makes sense there, I think. Like, and we'll put trees all around it and it'll look really good. But it is very, it's a very big open space because elephants need a lot of big open spaces because they're big animals, so. I think the next update is going to be pretty huge. And if not, then you just have to deal with me. <laughs> so quite the leap here uh, between where we just were and where we're at now. I think it feels a lot more like an actual habitat. And I'm really pleased with what's going on with it so far. So the wallowing pits, everything is still there. Nothing's really changed, but we have this additional house. And the minute that goes in, it solidifies the exhibit and it makes it feel so much better. I mean, you can see here from the wolves, you can, I mean, you got this big wall. You're not really gonna be able to, hopefully you won't be able to see it too much, but I mean, it's a big structure and it's gonna be a big structure. It has to house a lot of elephants, so. Uh, as you come walking up the side, you'll come walking up this way, and and I just ah, oh, I just I'm really happy with how this is turning out. It's not done yet, as you can see, we're missing some wall pieces, but we're getting the idea of it here. So let's talk about some of the little details we have here. Oh, a couple other things. I've actually uh, pulled the path away a bit. Um, again, it was really close, and I don't want. And maybe, probably even here, the elephants could reach it. But I, it was all along this area. It was very clear that the elephants could get to you. So we're, we're going to, we, we, I scooched the path back a little bit so it's a little harder. That also gives me more opportunity to add some trees in here. And theoretically, that will help me block the view. At least a little bit of the um, elephants from the wolf exhibit. And I think that's kind of important to do. So you'll notice there's some rocks here. These are these are phony baloney rocks. Uh, there's going to be doors here. I don't know why they're not there right now. I thought I had them in there. But you'll notice all the planting is up high. And there's all these protective railings for so the elephants don't destroy the plants. And that is directly... And it's not complete because uh, there's more rocks to add here. It's not complete yet because they're... Um, or I'm sorry, it's strictly... It's straight out of my uh, reference. The, the Houston Zoo has these. And I actually didn't even notice it until really studying the pictures today, which is kind of interesting. Like, I think that's part of the issue I'm having is you go to the zoo, you watch the animals, and even while I'm paying attention to uh, like the backstage bits as much as I can, things like that I miss. It wasn't until I was looking at how these rock walls are constructed that I even noticed these. And I've been going to that zoo for, for like 10 years, so... It was really cool to be like, oh, look at that. That's how that works. And made me feel real good. I, I'm really surprised also at the simplicity of this building. Like, come on, it's it's a box. But it is such, it is so utilitarian that I just it just feels so right. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited with how that turned out. And uh, did some more work with the walls here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna shore all this up in a little bit. 
But uh, the big thing here now is we're starting to work a little bit on the backstage and apologies if you know how backstages of elephant exhibits work, because I certainly don't. I mean, I get the general idea. There's a gate and the gate tends to slide back and forth. And a lot of the bars that I saw were big uh, rectangular um, bars, not round. And usually wide enough so elephants can stick their feet through them, trunks through them. Um, a lot of times that's how they, like when I go to the zoo, I watch them, they're getting their feet scrubbed and all the, you know, getting their feet cleaned or trimmed or buffed or filed or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, so we've got this gate system here and it's a two gate system. So you can have both sides open or closed. And that's how you would shuffle elephants from either from one pen to outside or one pen to the next pen or one pen to their pen. I did not put a gate back here intentionally because the back of this house has so many gates or so many giant doorways that it would be pretty easy to get. If you needed to get an elephant out, I, I would assume you would shuffle them into here and have them come out that way. One of the things that the uh, Houston Zoo does have is over here, there's an off exhibit outdoor pen, a holding pen. I wanna make sure to add that because those are those little uh, those are those little details, I think, that add realism. So I think you can think of this habitat as sort of an in-between from the hyper-realistic uh, wolf habitat to one of the significantly less more realistic habitats that I've ever made. Uh, I think this is a nice medium ground. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, I see how that would work. And it might not be 100% accurate, but I tell you what, it took me so long and I got so demotivated trying to do that wolf habitat that I don't want that to happen. Which is why I'm going to stick with a, yeah, that looks about right to me. And I'm not a zoo person. I know there's zoo people out there be like, well, actually. So uh, you're free to tell me how it should be, but don't expect me to actually change it. So uh, there is going to be one more little thing to look at before we call this episode done. This is definitely going to be a two-part episode. We are not going to be finished with the elephants um, in the next episode, uh, in the next little cut. So, uh we will finish the elephants in the next episode and then probably do some other smaller things around. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look at where we end up for today. And here we are. Things are progressing nicely and I think I've reached a, a pretty good stopping point for for today. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the efforts that I've been able to make. Uh, so let's take a look at what's new and where we're gonna go from here. So you can see the foliage here and the rock wall is doing a much better job now of, of hiding that building. And the green that I've chosen is um, an approximation of go away green based on some hex codes. And if you don't know what go away green is, it's a co thing coined, I think by Disney. Uh, certain things in the park are painted this green and they just kind of your eye just kind of loses them uh, your eyes are drawn to everything else but that color and and it's a way they can put things in plain view that you actually won't that you're less likely to see so that was kind of interesting so uh, we've gone ahead and we've got everything in position and the biggest addition here like I said is the backstage pen it is not massive by any means but I think it's serviceable. And I like how, like, front of house, this little planter, and we'll add some stuff in there. Oh, it's rocks, it's natural, it's pretty. Back of house, it's a concrete wall with some bars. But so much of a zoo is this. Like, parts you don't see, they look like this. And I think it's fine. Uh, the gate, we got another gate here, just one, not a double gate, and it is locked. <laughs> it is closed. Don't want no elephants getting out, but that's another way to get the elephants out. You can shuffle one out here and they can get them into where they need to go. And this is a pretty large backstage area here that we have not even started. So I guess that's going to have to come in the next episode. So that is actually the big, uh, and this little side storage building, I don't know what that would store. Um, that's where we're gonna call it a day for today and hopefully you're as excited as I am because I am really liking where this is headed uh, it's it's making all this feel really good 
Uh, this is going to be lots of trees and just this green area here to kind of separate this. And the thought is maybe this is a newer refurb of an older elephant exhibit, which is why there's not going to be enough room for uh, something. Maybe they've demolished something over here. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it's, it's coming along. And even with the in-game barriers, it, it still looks pretty okay. So imagine you could come in here, like this area. Like, oh, you're going to have elephants walking around here. And I, and I, and I did keep the natural land, uh, foliage intentionally. They're not, I wouldn't imagine that they would try their, to plant other plants. I mean, you can see it's a lot more bamboo in here, kind of to make it feel a little more... I don't know, biome, even though I don't think bamboo has anything to do with elephants, but, you know, it feels more adventure and, and exotic, so. But yeah, you can see, I, I'm, 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 I'm liking where this is headed. So hopefully you're excited too. In the next episode, we'll throw the elephants in here, not literally, shore up all the unfinished bits, and we will hit this side of the exhibit real hard, because this is looking pretty okay now, but this side's looking really kind of sad, so... Uh, if you did enjoy, go ahead and make sure you hit that like button. And if you're just finding me for the first time, or if you've been watching me for a while and you haven't yet, do consider subscribing so you don't miss anything. Uh, I'm kind of back in the groove a little bit. Uh, pace has been about an episode a week the last couple of weeks, and that seems to work well for me. Hopefully I can keep that continuing. And uh, I guess with all that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever. And I will see all of you for the next episode of Emerald Gardens. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.